from Krypton Radio and the creators of the Hanging With Web Show. It's the legend of the traveling TARDIS. Look inside and behind the scenes to one of the most enduring and beloved sci-fi worlds. Step inside the door to a world that's bigger, brighter, and beyond the imagination. As you become a part of the legend of the traveling TARDIS. And now, your host, Christian Basil. Welcome back, fellow Whovians, to the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. We've landed safely again. My name is Christian Basil. I am the host of this Traveling TARDIS radio show you're probably listening to on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, Spreaker, wherever you hear in the Hooniverse. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, so we're on Twitch. Yeah. Some of us, you are actually seeing us for the first time, and that's a scary thought because uh, I didn't know, so I'm still wearing my outfit from earlier today. But for those of you just joining us on Twitch, welcome. Thank you, and f and thank you for watching us. Today's episode is a little different because um, I've been getting a lot of questions and requests about conventions. Uh, but before we start on our topic, I want to introduce who's going to be helping me today. First off, uh, returning back fresh from Pensacon is the lovely Swan Song Cosplay. She nodded her Song head Swan. in agreement. Song Swan. I got it? Oh, you, you flipped it. Song, song. Oh, God. Song, song, cosplay. Uh, Jessica Novak. How you doing, Jessica? How was Pensacon? It was It was fun. It was definitely small and a very long drive. Um, but it was fun. It was, <laughs> Eight hours, it was like. fun. Yeah, six both ways. Six both ways. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so 12 five, total. Five if the cops aren't around. <laughs> Yeah, very true. So I think that was a, driving. Exactly. It was a George Carlin joke. If cops didn't see it, I didn't do it. So, welcome back, uh, author Mackenzie Floor. Hello. Mackenzie, welcome back. How? Uh, what? What book are you writing recently? What are you working on these days? I'm writing the second book to the Writer on series called The Rite of Abnegation. And for fans of Orlin and Mirchet, there's a lot of them. Cold, cold beans. And Nisha, are you on the line? I'm hoping she is. Hello. There we go. Uh, of course, our good friend from Diversely Geek, Nisha Mulchin. Hey, Nisha, how you doing? I am doing great. Thank you. Hey, Sorry for we... the extraneous noise around me. <laughs> no, that's okay. We, whatever you do on your side of the of the of the universe is your business, <laughs> and we'll leave it yeah. at that. Uh, so, ladies, welcome there. Uh, thank you for coming back. And I'm also going to be introducing my Hanging With Web Show team to help us out on this one. I'm talking about Garrett. I'm talking about Sage. And I'm talking about Dina, just in case they want to chime in, too, because this has a lot to do with conventions. Uh, the question that came up a lot that I'm getting through PMs and just people on random, uh, since the convention world is getting started again, Christian, uh, what do I need to bring or do when I get to conventions? We're going to tell you a bit of our experiences. We're actually going to formulate a top ten list for all you Whovians out there. Now, I have eight items on this list already. However, these girls are going to take and pick, it, pick, pick apart my list. If they don't like what they uh, hear on my list, they can take it out. And I've left two spaces for them to add in unless they take out some of my things. So we're going to have... 10 items for all of you Hooniverses, all you Whovians who may be going to conventions this time of year or whenever, uh, just to give you some advice, some ideas about what it is to be happy, safe, and having a wonderful convention experience. Now, before we do that, as we always, we go to the Who New News with Seijia. Hit it! <laughs> Oh, wait, Jessica, what is that on your head? <laughs> Mardi Gras beads. That's beads. Someone gave me a crown today, and it's Mardi Gras beads. Okay, Sage, let's go back to the news. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the news. Um, I do have some sad news. Oh. Um, Graham Curry yes. um, died at the age of 54. 
Um, yeah, he actually, young. yeah, he was very young. He wrote the 1988 Doctor Who story, um, The Happiness Patrol. Um, and this story is unique in the Doctor Who stories because it was mentioned in the Archbishop of Canterbury's Easter Sermon. Isn't that kind of an interesting note? And if I'm not mistaken, in my Hooniverse thought, this was actually an, epi- uh, an episode that kind of took a pokey stick over at Margaret Thatcher at the time, Prime Minister, if, I'm not, if anybody wants to correct me on that. But they did it so subtly. You are absolutely and- correct. And this was, uh, and I think it's the first time ever the TARDIS is painted pink. I think that's right. <laughs> I think that was the episode there, if I'm not mistaken there. But, um, yeah, I, we're going to miss you, Graham. I, um, you know, rest in peace out there. Do, do any anybody remember the Happiness Patrol? Did you ever guys ever see it there? What did you think? I didn't. No, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Cricket, I need cricket. to look it up. I'm the yes, only so. classic movie in here. <laughs> I'll represent you. I have you. my specific classic Who stuff. Like, Same Trial, here. Trial of a Time Lord is, like, my heart. Trial so of the Time I, Lord? I love it so much. I do, too. You you actually, if you uh, ever get a chance, and I'm sorry, we're going way off on a tangent, you should listen to uh, Trial of the Valyard, which <sighs> is, take, which is, it has the original three cast members. It has Linda Buckingham. It has... Uh, Michael Jason and uh, the Sixth Doctor, and the, I'm going to give you—I'm not going to give you the spoiler, but I'm going to give you the premise, which is really going to entice people. Somebody is put on trial, and the Doctor has been hired to defend them. And lo and behold, it's the Valyard. Their roles have completely switched, and the Valyard is now on trial for his life, and his defender is the Sixth Doctor. You can just think about what Colin Baker is saying the whole time that he's going. Like, Wait, what, what? I'm here to defend the Valyard? Really? <laughs> so, but, Grandma, yeah, man, we're going to miss you. Uh, man, I'm glad you were part of the universe. You wrote a wonderful episode out there. And um, that it's going to be part of my uh, seventh uh, Doctor mythos. Uh, what else we got in the news there? Okay, this one's fun. Um, as everybody should know, Red Nose Day is coming up uh, Friday, March 15th. And okay. Comic yeah. Relief... Um, is raising funds, right? All the, all the funds raised for what I'm going to tell you is going to Comic Relief, and they're offering one lucky winner the chance to have a special private breakfast with Jodie Whittaker and companion Mandip Gill. So it's coffee and breakfast. Isn't that kind sure of... It's not a awesome. dinner, are you sure it's not a dinner breakfast now? <laughs> no, no, no. It's not a dinner breakfast. Um, now that they sh- everybody's shipping those two out, I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> No, that's that going to be from? that's going to be um, an absolutely lot of fun. Um, you have to be over eighteen to enter, though. Um, you can be Sorry, under just... the age of eighteen, <laughs> provided you're over fourteen and you have a parent or guardian that says so. If uh-huh. you want to enter, um, you can go to the Doctor Who News website um, and look for the article, and then do the click here um, to enter, and you can get your chance to win breakfast. Which is why really do I have cool. to be over eighteen? You I'm going to be with the doctor and Yaz having breakfast. What could possibly go wrong that morning? I'm uh, sure they, really they don't the have doctor. to have a guardian with them, so you're not cheating the system. That's right, oh, see? Go. Gotcha. That's right, exactly right. Well, I, I'm i going to apply for that. I don't think I'm going to win. I there, there was a doctor who breakfast with like all the doctors that were living or something like that. I remember a while back. Does anybody remember that contest? I think it was I like breakfast, all the doctors, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take a chance. But you had to, for you to have a better chance, there was like one tier that was like, oh, if you want to spend a thousand dollars, you get ten thousand chances. I'm like, that's <laughs> even in the tier. Well, you can't yeah. have a chance if you don't enter at least once. I know, but I'm like a thousand, really? Oh, never mind. Anyway, what else is in the news there, Sage? Okay, so I have some I have some fun things. Um, I found on Radio Times, right? The Daleks invade oh. an English village to save a sci-fi museum. Talk to me about this. Okay, I, so, I, I remember. so right, right so yeah. normally a Dalek invasion of an English village is not a cause for celebration, um, but there's an mm-hmm. art teacher. His name is Neil Cole. Um, and there's a collection of toys and homemade models and posters and, and stickers and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, it's scattered around a Northumberland village of Allendale. So 
the community came around because they were threatening to shut it down. Um, mm-hmm. They constructed the Dalek, him and his students, um, and they were they were going to do it. And the Dalek can't fit inside their home, so a lot of people come up to go ahead and visit when the museum is closed. So the neighbors have now come out in support with their own displays of Daleks, so that it can it can go ahead and stay open. Um, they're calling it Alan Dalek. <laughs> 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 Yes. I think this is the first time in history a Dalek oh. has actually saved something, and we're all proud of it. Yes. So, I mean, a Dalek invasion actually saved something. That's it. That's Alan Dalek. Awesome. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. Yes. Man. So I thought that was a fun piece of news, and that is my quirky Who Knew News for this week. Awesome. Well, folks, we got to pay some bills. When we get back, we are going to be talking about uh, giving you some advice on our convention list. Um, if you, uh, we've actually asked a question on our Facebook page. If you have any advice for people who may be starting out in the conventions, or maybe just some advice that you know people haven't thought of, we're going to go over my list, and the girls are going to add on or take out away from my stuff and add on some of their stuff, and we're going to tell you a little bit of our experiences when we return to the legend, of the traveling Tardis. Stay tuned. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. Channeling the Mothership is an exciting journey into the higher mysteries. Certified psychic medium and clairvoyant Jerry McDaniel's readings, writings, and messages have been received by thousands of people in more than 45 countries. These messages have been obtained by channeling his higher self. How does he do it? Is it a blessing or a curse? And what lay beyond the reach of your five senses? Channeling the Mothership. Explore the mysteries of the spiritual and the metaphysical. Channeling the Mothership by author Jerry McDaniel. Available on Amazon.com today. From the imagination of author Kevin J. Kessler, the Rosinani dragons are no more. They have fallen into the obscurity of lore. Now warrior Valentine Beret and Serafina, a magically gifted princess, are on a mission to save the world of Terra. Together they must face the Rosinani legacy and combat the greatest threat their world has ever known. In the end, who is stronger, the man or the dragon? Find out in Kevin J. Kessler's The Rosinani Series on Amazon.com today. It's Germany, 1938. Charlotte is a 15-year-old girl living in the Jewish quarter. George lives in the city proper and enamored by Charlotte's charm and grace when she wanders into his cobbler shop. George decides right then and there that he is going to marry her. Follow along as this unlikely couple struggles to stay one step ahead of the Gestapo and their dramatic escape from Nazi Germany. Good things always happen in springtime. From author Joanne Fisher on Amazon.com today. And we're back to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis radio show. My name is Christian Basil. Everybody, welcome back and thank you for joining us. And for those of you joining us on Twitch, um, I am wearing pants. They That's know. They, know. <laughs> they know. They're all. They. We're getting messages. They're all so grateful. They're also grateful. There. We're being joined by with Mackenzie Floor. We're also being joined by Nisha Mulchin and Jessica Womack of Song Swan Cosplay. I'm going to say that so I can remember this, so she doesn't harass me about that. By the way, she still has my TARDIS from Pensacon. Yes, I'm going to stalk her until she gives me back my. Ta- give me back my son. I Any, just oh, borrowed oh. her for a bit. It's fine. You borrowed her? <laughs> yeah. I have a key. Oh, okay. I got to stop making duplicates. It's, 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 it's <laughs> bad. It's getting really bad. It's like the doctor. Everybody's got a duplicate key to the TARDIS somewhere. Yeah. So, ladies, we are going to start putting together a list of what people who may not be familiar going conventions, what they should bring. Uh, we all have to agree to this list as far as my entries, and if you want to take out anything or put anything in, let me know. But I'm going to start off with the first one. Uh, the number one I think thing I think you should bring is moolah, money, and I would say a minimum of fifty bucks. Would that be something that we should be adding there? I'll take that all as a yeah. 
Yep, I think we all agreed yeah. to cash. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's one. Mackenzie, what would you add to that list? For me, I would say it's no, you are going to get your autographs from and photos from, and specifically huh. when they are scheduled. So plan your day out. Have a day planned. Yes. Day. Okay. To go off that, uh, one of my friends said to have it on a note on your phone so you're not constantly pulling out a piece of paper mm-hmm. and that way it's always accessible and uh, it's easier to f- figure it out. So like once you already have it planned, have it written down in a place that's easy to ac- ac- access. Yeah. Where does that yeah, accent I, go? <laughs> I keep a note a note for every single con a day by day which where everything is going to be and where I want to be. So I just go to my phone. No, in fact, you know what? That's going to be my third entry, which was actually my second pick. Uh, cell phones, but not only cell phone, have either a charger or a backup battery or even both well, to have at the same time. Just because, yeah, you, you. how long does a cell phone last at a convention? I would say the life of a cell phone lasts at a convention for 10 minutes before you're sitting up against... How many people have you seen walking across the room and you're seeing them just sitting up against the wall and they're using every plug they could possibly find and the, breath, the and their day is just uh, borked because they... Yes, I think as convention centers suck the life out of them. It's never <laughs> signal and it just kills them. <laughs> you think there's a conspiracy that conventions just sit there and they just like, they have this power, they, they actually... Power up the convention from your cell phone. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Totally. That's interesting. And, um, <laughs> Doctor Who episode. They steal the power from you and like reuse it. <laughs> okay, you've been oh, like, I... too much off it. <laughs> I hear a new episode coming on. That sounds pretty good. Right, I like there it. There you go. There. Right? Go. Me. Nisha, what would you add to my list? We've got three so far that we concur. Um, so one of the very first things I make sure to do is make sure we have a first aid kit with all of the the sundries. So that would be Tylenol, ibuprofen, band, Band-Aids, Gatorade. Gatorade packages are a must, okay. especially if you're there for an all day. So a first aid kit, that's that's paying attention to, to your nutritional needs, too, so... Gotcha. And actually, I put down medicine, meds for the day that you, you know, you have that little day planner of those med things, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Just bring one of those. Um, I'm going to tack well, on. No, go ahead. A first aid kit. That's a little, that's meds, but first aid kit is like just in case you get dehydrated and protein, so put a com- snacks. There you go. And a but, con hack for meds is um, one of my friends told me a contact lens case. Because small, especially if you're cosplaying, Ooh, yeah. sometimes you need something very right. small to be able to fit into a very small space that you can mm-hmm. carry. So contact lens cases are great for those little extra pills that you might need throughout the day, but you don't want to bring a whole big thingamabob. So um, definitely, I, I would say number five, we're sliding into food and water. But the thing is, is that some of these conventions... They're they're uh, they're vicious. They're like, okay, let's you open up your bag. You learn how to smuggle. I <laughs> have never done that. Yes. Oh, me? <laughs> you know, oh. the things I've smuggled in. I, I cosplayed Jessica Jones once, and I totally smuggled in an entire whiskey bottle with tea in it. Not whiskey. I'm not that bad. But like, I stuck it. What was it? It was like in my pants, and it was through my shirt. But because I had the jacket over it, it was in the back. By the way. But, like, <laughs> learn how to get creative with how you uh, smuggle things in. That would be my thing. And the views and opinions of this show are not necessarily that of the show. <laughs> Those of your There's guests. a reason I always cosplay criminals, okay? E- even though I'm kind of uh, excited about this moment, we don't condone smuggling whiskey in your pants. It wasn't whiskey. It was oh, whiskey. It, was? it just looked like whiskey. Oh, Okay. Okay. You know, if you see Jessica wearing. In many circles, you can actually end that sentence as we don't condone smuggling. But in this case, we have to be very specific. We do. Yes. If you see Jessica dressing up as Jessica Jones, just follow her around. She's got the booze. I've got the booze. Yeah, I've got got the booze. That's Jessica. Jessica's for seven. Okay. (laughs) 
Sage, what would you add to my list? Well, I did like with the first aid kit, and I always thought of Band-Aids, but safety pins. For some reason, I always need safety pins at a con, and I never used to carry them, and now I always have some in my pocket, which can be dangerous in case they come open. Um, So Can I actually build up on your request, on your uh, suggestion? Mm -hmm. I would say, especially if you're a cosplayer, emergency sewing kit. Mm-hmm. And that includes safety pins. There. That is true. But safety pins actually fit really nice in one of those little Altoid tins. Uh-huh. And then you can just put it in your pocket and then you don't poke yourself with the safety pins. Gotcha. Uh-huh. So we'll kind, of, we'll, we'll kind of mix it up. We'll say safety kit because I, I meant, as, as funny as it sounds, um, at certain hotels you can actually go to the front desk and get a, a, a sewing kit and carry that around just to be on the safe side just in case you're somebody who cosplays and and you know unfortunately have one of those costumes that can just easily tear and rip and you know and I think also knowing where the some of these newer larger conventions like MegaCon and SuperCon they have places where they do first aid they actually have volunteers that will well, cosplay med is that what they call yeah. yeah. Yeah, the cause so, hospital. So definitely check out where those guys are at. If you're wearing a costume that you think is going to break, or even just to know, uh, that would be cool. So we're up to number six. Uh, Garrett, what would you like to add to my list? Um, I actually think they covered most of what 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 I had, which was to stay hydrated, so plenty of water, and or Gatorade um, to, to keep those electrolytes going and stay hydrated um, is important. Um, I would remind everybody to do the very best you can to have a little extra cash for trying to eat right because uh, energy levels, you yeah. know, fall and you can't, one cannot survive on hot dogs and hamburgers and the greasiest fries ever made on planet Earth. I can. Are you sure? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm fairly certain that it's not good for survival. It's good for. Have you seen cosplay Michael? Yeah, I was going to say, cosplay <laughs> I, Michael might. <laughs> yeah, I've seen cosplay Michael eat, so I. No, I, I make him have fruit. <laughs> yes. But, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, some red fruit. Yeah, some there you fruit. go, peanut butter crackers. Yeah, something, something that's peanut got a... Peanut butter crackers, protein. Yeah. Oh, and cheese. I, I, yeah, so I try highly it. recommend nut packs with um, raisins or cranberry. Because yes. Like, Look at you go, Jess. <laughs> trail mix. Trail mix, guys. Yeah. That's Dina a great a... source of everything. Yeah. You Jessica, can see everything. Just... Forget a fallout shelter. Hydration <laughs> doesn't start on con day. Because yeah, no. A lot of people are wearing like crazy costumes and everything like that and i've heard a lot of people go oh i don't want to pee sorry if that's crude is that crude i don't know i don't want to go to the loo i don't know this show (laughs) not anymore a lot of people they don't want to drink because of that and a lot of them get dehydrated but what a lot of people don't realize if you haven't been an athlete is hydration starts two to three days before you want to be hydrating your muscles and your body at least three or four days before, especially if you're not wanting to drink so much that you will have to go. And that way, if you want to push the limits and not drink as much on con day, you still have the water reserve from the prior days already in your muscles and everything. And it's, there's less likely for you to become dehydrated. Right. Stay away yeah. from sodas. Anything caffeinated will suck no out caffeine. any hydration. Yeah. No caffeine and very low sodium. Uh, or at least keep it at natural sodium. Well, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, energy drinks, I would say no, right? Because you just crash, you crash nope. and burn. Not you at all. You're good for the first five minutes. Hydration you got. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dina, I haven't heard from you. What would you add to my list? Because we're up to six stuff now. Oh. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. And Dina, Dina has said okay, her piece. We'll, oh, we'll get back to you, Dina, if we if we don't get another four. How about that? Okay. Uh, Mackenzie, let's go back to you. What would you add to my list? We've got uh, money. We've got plan your day. We've got cell phone and battery, first aid kit, food and water, sewing kit with pins. Oh, I got uh, comfortable pins. shoes. Oh. That's what oh. I was going to say. What comfortable shoes? Yeah, comfortable that one's coming up. <laughs> and that's a change it, in, too. I made a big right. I made a big mistake by wearing flip flops one day and that just never yeah, I, I could feel my feet hitting Australia. That's how bottom mm-hmm. up they were. They they really were like ow 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 yeah. ow every step. So definitely comfortable shoes out there. Um, feet are everything at your con. Yes. Without there is no con for you. So you have to put that one in perspective. Um yes. if anything 
can just keep a backup pair in your and a backup pair of clothes in your in your bag or, or in your car because you never know if you're going to get overheated. Like Jessica was saying, it happens so much, and your day oftentimes will go three hours longer than you expect it, right. and then all of a sudden you have something else to do, and, and you can push the, your limits and make yourself sick. So definitely backup clothes somewhere. Right. Shoes, like you said. Oh, an emergency. I forgot to say that with the first name. <laughs> no, I got, um, also, I'm just going to, I don't know if I should put this on the list, but I mean, it only makes sense. A backpack. If you're going to carry all this stuff, you need something, especially if you're going to be cosplaying, if you're going to be moving around, if you got money, or if anything, you're going to be buying stuff at the conventions, definitely you're going to need a backpack to haul all this stuff in. Uh, so I'm going to write that down. Everybody's shaking their head yes on the backpack. Mm-hmm. So or McKin- incorporating okay. into a cosplay a bag of some sort. Right. Yeah, whatever and works. So the other thing is planning a day that you carry a backpack. So if you're an avid cosplayer, a mm-hmm. lot of times we'll say, this is the day that we're going to carry the backpack and do purchases. Yeah. And that way the other days we have the smaller bags that have our essentials that yeah. are incorporated within the cosplay, but then we have the one day that we're like, okay, this will be the day that I have to get all the autographs, get all of this, and this is the one day that we won't go completely screen accurate, you know, and have a backpack or something that day. So I know as a cosplayer that's planned, but if you're not cosplaying, bring a backpack. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would also bring a backpack and make sure to pack lightly. I know people who fill that thing to the brim. You have to and... go through security. Don't yeah, like... stuff in it. <laughs> Well, they put a lot of st- not only a lot of stuff in the potential if somebody goes through security and go, okay, you have to take that out, take that out, take that out. But I mean, you are toting this, and unless you are consuming stuff in it in some form or fashion, like drinking the water or eating stuff, yeah. that yeah. thing at the end of the day will be your living nightmare. At 9 a.m., it's wonderful because you got everything. At 9 p.m., you're still walking with this thing like a bowling ball attached to you, and you're like, ah, God, you know, can I get rid of something? But you realize you fill it up to the brim. So backpack, just keep in the mind how much stuff, what you really need at the time that you're going to those conventions there. So, McKinsey, we've got a couple more items that we need to fill it up. Um, what else can you think of out of those uh, more items? I actually do have a couple more things on my list that we haven't touched. I would say for Wizard World specifically, because that's the one I do the most at, VIPs. Make sure if you're going to do more than, say, two actors and they're the big actors, Mm -hmm. get those VIPs. It's essential. Okay. Okay. I'm going to actually, I'm going to put that with uh, planning the day. And if you get the VIPs, go for it. I'm looking for, like, tangible stuff to carry with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to do something, um, if you're going to do something, yeah. Uh, and you're going to be a VIP or something like that. Just uh, you, also back to planning your day, know where you're going to. And I'm equating this. I think I said this earlier for our Twitch folks. Uh, the best way to think about this when going to a convention is think about planning your day at a theme park. Practically everything that you take to a theme park, comfortable shoes, a backpack, First aid kit, uh, uh, food, and everything. You you, you got to imagine you're going to spend at least eight to ten hours in this place. You paid a lot of money to come in here. You're going to have a lot of traffic. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of tension. Take your time. Relax. Go sit down somewhere. Don't let it stress you out because if you if you're not planning it in advance, you don't have everything in gear. It's going to be massive. It's going to be a cluster. It's going to be congestive. It's going to feel like you're not getting anything accomplished. If you can plan your day, or at least have a better idea, like Mackenzie said, if you're a VIP, you know, get get that get that going for you there. It, it'll save a lot of time and it'll save a lot of money. Speaking of which, folks, we're gonna pay some bills. We're gonna continue our list when we come back around after the advertisements. Thank you for continuing to listen to the Legend of the Traveling Tardis and become part of the legend. The Rite of Wands. One boy, one right. And a world of deadly secrets that could change the course of history forever. It's time for The Rite of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. When a horrible fate reveals itself during the Rite of Wands ceremony, Myrda must find a way to change his destiny. Forbidden from revealing the future, he is granted a wand and magical powers in order to save himself and those he loves. But Myrda is not the only one with secrets. The Rite of Wands by Mackenzie Floor, available on Amazon.com now. 
Every year, tens of millions of people flock to Florida for its sunny beaches and world-famous tourist attractions. Most never learn about the strange and unusual locations just off the beaten path. From the UFOs of Gulf Breeze to Robert the Haunted Doll in Key West, learn about the myths, monsters, and legends from the dark side of the Sunshine State. With author Mark Muncy and illustrator Carrie Schultz in their books, Eerie Florida and Freaky Florida from the History Press. Find them at eerieflorida.com or wherever books are sold. Hello, sweeties. I'm Crystal Moore. I play the doctor in fan series Doctor Who Velocity. You're listening to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis radio show. Now on Amazon.com, War Calls, Love Cries, a Civil War novel by Mark Berry. Isaac Wells is an innocent farm boy living in upstate New York. His dreams are shattered by a treacherous brother and the onset of a devastating civil war. War Calls and Love Cries is a fast-moving historical narrative. It is an emotional roller coaster ride and a riveting must-read book that you will think about and talk about for a long time to come. War Calls and Love Cries is the kind of book you will cherish for a lifetime on Amazon.com today. From some of today's best-selling, award-winning authors comes 22 page-turning tales, Cursed Lands. Cursed Lands will lead you through one doomed world after another in a haunting dystopian urban fantasy. Join the courageous as they battle for survival across worlds where fae, vampires, angels, witches, and more roam freely. Cursed Lands is coming soon on Apple Books, Kobo, and Nook. Pre-order your copy for just 99 cents today. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. My name is Christian Basil. I am your host of this radio show. And joining with me, I've got Jessica, I've got Nisha, I've got Mackenzie, and I've got the Hanging With Web Show radio team, my buddies over there in the recording studio. Uh, we are continuing to do a list for you guys to give you uh, some su- suggestions and advice about uh, what to do, what to take, and what experiences you don't want to have and some experiences you do want to have when you're going to conventions and we've got two more items on the list now sage just sent me a message you have an item you want to add to my list what is what is that item actually it's from a conversation that i had with rick stafford um who is known as the true aquaman um especially because we've been talking about cosplay and that is to remember to take a shower and please, I know, uh, please. That I know is, that, that is a please. I know that seems. I know that seems like it should be common sense, but you know, everybody gets busy during the convention, and you know, and then they are after parties, and and you can barely get enough sleep. But always to remember to shower, especially if you're going to change costumes. I actually have or something. We're not I'm, going to change costumes. Or not. Yeah, or not. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love everybody who goes to conventions. I love everybody who comes to see us. I love everybody who endures our panels. But dear God, please, deodorant, some cologne, body spray. some body spray. And, and, and please remember, please remember, everybody, body spray is not a shower. No, that is true. That's right. Do not just keep just coating it on. Not a shower either. That's right. Yes. No, that is not a shower either. The pool doesn't the pool. count. <laughs> does not count as a shower. Oh, I don't know. There's For a lot of people who think that counts, though. <laughs> no. It's smooth dip. Guys, as if someone you really... who's been hugged by so many cosplayers, <laughs> it does not count. It counts. You just smell... You just stink and smell of chlorine. Really reeky chlorine. Yeah. And for you guys who really believe the commercials, no, if you put that Axe body spray on you and you stink to high hell, no, the girls are not going to be coming running to you. They're going to be running in the other direction. You will smell great with arm, you know, with, with you will smell like the floor of a taxi cab. It's really not cool. You gotta, you gotta shower, put on some deodorant, and I, this actually adds to my list, kind of. Um, this is going <laughs> to intertwine with it, and I didn't know if this is something that like tagged to the first aid kit, but uh, something like a refresher kit, meaning that cologne, deodorant, yeah. uh, just body wash, gum, a yes. wash rag, and that was actually on my list. Mints. Yeah, I was going to say a hygiene kit. <laughs> hygiene kit, yes, a hygiene kit. Yeah. And it's not that we don't love you people. It's just, you know, you don't want to smell me at 9 p.m. Hand sanitizer. I don't know. We don't want to refer to you as, you remember the smelly Deadpool? Yes. <laughs> as opposed to the really cool Deadpool? No, yes. yeah, you'd rather be known as the really cool one, not the, do you remember the one that really smelled? Right. Hey, make Again, sure you have hand sanitizer. Between... Between a cosplayer at 9 a.m. and a cosplayer that day who's not changed at 9 p.m., it's a huge smell difference, and you don't want to be that person that 
everybody's walking around to get away from and say, yeah, I'll hang out with you. I'll just be over here if you need me. Uh, so... If you are a cosplayer and you don't have the ability to wash your cosplay and you're planning on wearing it more than one day, not only disinfectant spray, but also dryer sheets. If you rub those on them, That's not, bad. not only does it take away static electricity from your hair if it's frizzy as well, but um, it can also really help freshen up a cosplay without you having to wash it in between. I actually have one more item that I'm going to add, and this should complete the kit. And I'm taking my cue from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Bring a towel. It doesn't have to be the beach towel, but a face towel. Uh, you know, you're going to be sweating a lot. Bring a towel of some kind, just in case you have to wipe your hands. Uh, also, uh, who shouted out uh, hand sanitizer? I think that was Nisha. It was Dina. It was Dina. I'm sorry, Dina, Dina yeah. Dina is part of the uh, <laughs> hygiene kit. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we're, we'll, we'll make that part of the hygiene kit. So, uh, everybody, we've got money. We've got plan your day, uh, especially if you can, you can afford VIP, go for it. Um, get your cell phones. Make sure you got tons of battery and a place, uh, just in case there are no, you know, your batteries die, uh, places you can plug it in. But just make sure you have plenty of power. It is uh, going to be a long day. Uh, first aid kit. Uh, food and water, if you if it's accessible, and I, I I really think if I'm not mistaken, if you have a low sugar content, they they can't turn you away for the food, can they? Yeah, if you say you have low blood sugar at any point in time, you can definitely bring in some crackers because both I and my fiance, our blood pr- blood sugar will drop like that, and like we have to have something immediately. So, and we always bring in crackers. Gotcha. Most of them don't allow you to bring so drinks. Just, so just so you know. Because I do have, you know, I mean, everyone knows I have a, a little bit of a disability. So when you're, they're not allowed to discriminate against you in any way, shape, or form based on right. dis- uh, disability. And if you need to have certain liquids, if you can only have certain fluids, only certain foods and snacks, etc., they have to let you in with it. They or really you do. Food to take a pill. Um, yeah. yeah. Food on your stomach to take a medication as well. Well, yeah. that's, that's right. Based on that, they can't. They there is no, there are no laws that allow them to do that. It's a HIPAA violation. So I can tell you, if you're ever ready to talk that talk, I'll go over that one with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, um, what the, I know disability at the cons. That's something I know. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and and uh, for everybody who's uh, watching on Twitch, um, Jessica is making me very hungry right now, and I'm, I'm sure she brought enough for everybody in the studios. Yeah. <laughs> right. We just we just had to go out there and get it from her. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we also have a sewing kit. Uh, we have um, comfortable shoes. I'm, I'm, I I don't know if I I think that's just I don't want to say that's too much, but I think if you're just wearing them into the convention, I think that's just, or leave th- them in your car, but just have mm-hmm. them. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just have them on standby. Uh, backpack definitely to, to house all this stuff. A, hy- uh, a hygiene kit and a towel. So this completes our top ten list of items that you should bring to uh, conventions. But when this uh, episode drops, if you want to uh, give uh, any more advice, or if you guys out there in the Hooniverse think we should be adding more to our list, go for it. Um, I think we're missing a big one, though. What's that? A sonic screwdriver or a vortex? <laughs> <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Without my vortex manipulator, just saying, and I'll have a few doctors who disagree with me, but vortex manipulator, it saves you a lot of problems. Yeah. Gets you out. Motorbike in traffic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If I don't have my traveling TARDIS, people will really go, okay, why are you here? You <laughs> should go home, get your TARDIS, come back, and then we'll, we'll let you go to the convention and play around there. So, uh, one of the... Uh, I, w- I want people to understand um, mostly that, first of all, if you're going to be out there at the conventions, please take your time. Be patient. Don't rush things. Uh, take it easy. Take a breather. There's going to be a lot of people. You're surrounded by a lot of wonderful, happy, and germ-filled <laughs> people who are out there. So take your time. Get hydrated. Smelly. Rest. Smelly, yes. Just 
just take your time when you're going to these conventions because if not, it's just like a theme park. By the end of the day, you've gone only on three rides and wonder what the rest of your day has been like. You want to enjoy the scene. Uh, and a good thing about what Mackenzie says, yes, if you plan your day out, you, 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 you utilize your time out there. You know what you want. Check out the vendors. Check out who, who you're going to be signing. Make sure you plan out your day and plan. I think uh, for the the worst convention experience that I've had, and I won't say the convention because I like them very much, but I mean, they had two um, on the top floor of the convention. There was only two ways of getting in and out on an electric stairwell, and that was it. And one big show at the time was releasing as one big show was getting in. And it was just a nightmare because it, there was only two ways of getting in and out. And at some point, nobody was going up and down those escalators. It was that jam-packed. And it was just a scary thought. Luckily, they've, they've, they've resolved this problem, but I just remember, my goodness, if anything should have happened, we were stuck. I didn't even think we moved for like 20 minutes getting out. We, I, we, we saw uh, one show and the other one was just loading up. Now the, at the time, these two shows were at the zenith of popularity, but when you only have an, two escalators to get people in and out, it wasn't, I think it was, just wasn't planned well. And luckily only people kind of gripe, nothing bad happened, but my goodness, it was just a nightmare there. Mackenzie, can you, uh, what is some suggestions that you want to give people any experiences that you've had that you're like, Oh, I need to tell people don't do this. Yeah, one of the big things when it comes to guests is realize that things happen. You need to make a backup of you, whatever your plan is, even if you're using your cell phone for your schedule. I noticed some people were mentioned they just you know write down a list. Have a backup, and maybe even have a backup of that that backup because things happen. Right. You, know, you could have something like a plane being late, or an actor can't go last second and they cancel. So you got to have some type of, or maybe they're running super, super late, so now you're stuck in a, a photo op, but you're supposed to be in a panel at the same time. So you mm-hmm. just got to have all that. That, that. Unfortunately, it's all happened to me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And be Nisha. nice to the workers because then they'll help you out in those situations. Of If you're stuck in a photo op and you're supposed to be at another signing or something like that, yeah. a lot of times if you're nice to people, they'll do anything to help you out. But if you're rude to them, they're not going to help you. Being someone who's worked with people and has been in the situation where I needed people, the nicer you are, the more that people will bend over to help you. So please, because a lot of these people are volunteers. And only that, that, it's that theme park mentality again. They're cast members of a, a convention. They're dealing with thousands and thousands of thousands of people moving around, and they're trying to get everybody to queue up in this little thing that they've taped off. And they're trying their best to make it orderly and as safe as they can be for people while being efficient so that you, the, the, the attendee, are, are, you know, get to what you need to do, what to do, and they try to make it for you. And if you're just on their face all the time, of which I've seen them, it's just like, come on, these guys, and most of them are volunteers. So, yes, not only do I uh, condone that these people will be nicer to you, but just be nice to them in general because they are working their butts off. They're working their tails off uh, to sometimes even, uh, you, you know, to be a volunteer to do this so that they can spend time going to the conventions. And in some cases, they don't even get that much time to go to the con there. Nisha, I want to talk about your experiences, but we've got a hard break. When we come back, we're going to talk more about our convention experiences. We've got our list now, folks. And uh, please continue to listen to The Legend of the Traveling Tardis and become part of the legend. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available today. Murder by the Gods is a mystery thriller set in the glorious past of ancient Egypt. When the son of the Scorpion King suddenly collapses after receiving a mysterious threat from the god Seth, the prince is convinced it is the gods who are trying to kill his family. Murder by the Gods is filled with adventure and romance in a kingdom that would become known as the Land of the Pharaohs. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available on Amazon.com today. Devarius has lost everything. His parents murdered, his sister kidnapped, and the new village he called home destroyed. 
The Dragonia Empire is out of control, destroying anything and everything in their path, searching for the Resistance. Devarius is left with no choice but to find the Resistance, join them, and hope he can help them defeat the Dragonia Empire once and for all to bring peace to the land of Keldroga. Dragonia, Rise of the Wyverns, Dragonia Empire Volume 1 This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Web Show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellus Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellus Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellus Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Work out on EmbellusEffects.com and remember, cosplay is for everyone. Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book, The Pink Canary, a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. He's going to kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. Hi, folks. Welcome back to The Legend of the Traveling TARDIS. My name is Christian Basil. Uh, for all of you joining us on uh, Twitch or iHeartRadio or Krypton Radio or iTunes or wherever you're listening to us, thank you again. We're continuing our discussion and wrapping up our discussion about conventions, our stories, our information, our uh, experiences, so that for those of you who may be uh, going to conventions starting this year, uh, we just want to get you ready, get you prepared to be safe and have a happy and wonderful experience time, just like anything that you would get out at Disney World or Universal or SeaWorld, any of these theme parks. If you plan, if you get your stuff ready and you are prepared, you're going to have a wonderful time and be ready for anything else. If you're not, you're just going to have a dismal time. You're going to feel ill. Uh, you're just not going to have a great time as it should be. Nisha, tell us an experience that you had at the conventions that it wasn't, so positive and your experience and, and tell people, you know, what you recommend to make sure I that know. doesn't happen. I'm positive one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to add something to the list and I know this is going to sound funny, tangible or not, but a con buddy. Just put that on the list. Con button. Someone with you who can help you out. Someone who's your, your spotter, who's your runner and someone who actually knows the con scene. And even oh. if they don't, one who's the other half of your planning. So that, there you go. I kept thinking, what else would I add? Gotta have, <laughs> gotta have the wingman. Oh yeah, so gotta have the wingman. Con GPS. The companion. The companion. Con there we go. <laughs> companion. Companion. Look at that. Okay. Nice. We, we 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 coined that phrase. There you go. Hmm. Dina filed so, a copyright um, on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you and I have been doing this quite a while, Christian. Yeah. So I've had varying experiences in my life. Um. I have had some difficult experiences being a woman in a because uh, there are times when I have to be in a motorized wheelchair, um, depending on how my, you know, life happens to be yeah. on that day. And so it is extremely difficult, my friends, to be in a motorized wheelchair, to be conscientious of everyone around you and not to get knocked over, <laughs> smacked into and not to hit people. If people around you don't pay attention. Right. Um, there's there's a there's what's called con courtesy. So I believe con courtesy is something that you should have prepared, and you have to have that etiquette before you go into it. Otherwise, you can have an experience where I've had it where I because I can't get to where um, I need to enter to go to a panel, and they have not prepared for me to be able to get upstairs or go on a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I get stuck, and that has happened to me. Um, wow. Even if I'm not in a chair, I've had times when I, I cannot go upstairs. So I will be like, hey, did you figure out another way for me to get up there? And the answer will be like, you know, we didn't think of that. We're going to have to figure it out. The time to figure it out is not then. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> figure it out ahead of time. So us fans who, you know, paid the time and the, and, 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 and the, time and the money, yes, but every, and the effort to be there... Give us the opportunity to be able to attend everything safely, with joy, and as a community. So for me, that's a very important thing. As the fan who's there, pay attention to the people who are there. 
um, who are look like they they're in a chair, etc. Be con, con courtesy, right? And for the people running the cons, on the other side of it, be courteous of those people who can't get to get easily to places, and think about that ahead of time. Good, so that for me stuff. is an extremely important important part of the the, the picture. And just good remember, stuff. running in front of a wheelchair is the most unsafe thing you can do. <laughs> For no, both no, no. parties, I, I for, totally... for you and for the person in the wheelchair. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's right. I, I I totally get it because my dad, when I used to be able to take him to Disney, he had a Moserized wheelchair. And literally people, he was a magnet. People would literally jump in front of him. I'm just like, uh, you're not yes. going to win. He is in literally a car that's going and you oh. will be run over. And I'm like, I will have, he will have no responsibility if you jump in front of them, you, yeah, it's not only be mindful of people in, uh, you, you know, in in, 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 in in wheelchairs and such like that, but just be mindful of people. They're having a great time. The last thing they're doing is looking forward. They always walk in one direction, look in another, and they're probably heading in the direction that you're walking. Just be mindful and just, you know, kind of get out of the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to at Pensacon, there was a girl, she had a service dog. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I informed her, like, because the dog seemed scared when I finally saw <laughs> the dog at the end of the night. And she was like, yeah, um, someone kept me. running into them and hitting them. Like, hit the service dog. Right, exactly. And it's, it's not cool, guys. Come on. I mean, really. I just... It's on courtesy. I think I'll write a book. <laughs> you, know, you know, on that topic, <laughs> Christian, can I throw sure. something in there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, know, I know Jessica will appreciate this, and it's one of the, I think, the first things that, that Cosplay Michael learned when he got on there. If you're planning to go to a con and you're going to see some amazing things and some wonderful cosplay, cosplay is not consent. So please make sure you stop yes. a cosplayer, ask to take a picture. You know, Cosplay Michael is there to take pictures with you. He wants to take pictures with you, but we want to know who you are as his parents, and, mm-hmm. you know, we want to right. know what's going on. Jessica wants to know when her picture's been taken and where she's going to find it on Facebook, you know. So take the minute to ask a cosplayer to take a picture. Don't just kind of snap and go and assume that it's okay, because it's not okay. And, and a lot of a lot of people come... Uh, who are guests as cosplayers and a lot of people come who are just having a good time in cosplaying and they didn't really come to take pictures with you. So ask before you do that and remember that as, as a part of your con courtesy that, you know, some, some are cosplayers and some are people who came in costume and you don't know which is which. So please ask. Right. Even though people are taking pictures all over the place, it is a nice courtesy to let the person know, no, regardless of what they're dressed up as, regardless of who they are, regardless of what they're doing, take the time to just at least, hey, I want to get your picture. Uh, 99.9% of the time, all these people who come to the conventions, they're wonderful, they're nice, and they will pose for you in the best way they know how, because they want their pictures taken. That's why they dressed up in the first place, but they want to do it in on their terms. They want to do it on their terms so they feel safe, they feel, and they acknowledge that you are taking their picture. Let me do something for you. If you want me to pose for something, go ahead and ask them. Um, and, I mean, not not too weirdly, but I mean, and spoiler, ask... they might have a really cool prop that's hidden. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You never would have seen if you didn't ask. And exactly. that sometimes even makes the cosplay. Exactly, like a bottle of whiskey in their pants. They that's right, you never, <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. Maybe they had just gotten and wasn't able to get the whiskey bottle. <laughs> That's right. Oh, That's right. And I have one more thing, Kristen, I wanted to yes, throw in there. Yes, and and just because, um, and, and especially with our panel tonight, um, you uh, had you uh, had you had uh, mentioned early on the the convention circuit as kind of a a, a, a theme park. And remember, yes. all those celebrity autographs, all those great things that you're going to get, those are the Space Mountains and the Splash Mountains. But yes. don't miss the smaller rides. Hit those alleyways. Yeah. Check out the Mackenzies and the Nishas and the Jessicas because they are filling up artist alleys. They're filling up cosplay, you know, communities uh, areas. And they're there for you, too. And you don't want to say, hey, I went to Disney World and I only rode 
Space Mountain. You want to go into a con and say, you know, yeah, I got my autographs from these big celebrities, but I also met a great new author. I met a great cosplayer. I met a terrific, uh, you know, fan group, or, you know, I really found out some things about this community. And don't miss those opportunities in favor of, you know, eyes locked front. So when you're planning your convention experience, plan some time to go and see the the niches and the Jessicas and all of the independent creators that are out there because they're there they're there for you and and you know we're there for you that's why we go. Mm-hmm. I and will, go um, if you don't mind, jump in and say to you, yeah. Garrett, perfect because when you are going to something as monumental as San Diego Comic Con or New York Comic Con, this is not an experience that you can compare to Pensacon or even to MegaCon. Mm-hmm. It's two completely different yes. worlds. They have built a world for you, and I mean a world. So you be prepared to visit what you can in that world. You can't visit the entire globe in three to four days, right? Mm -hmm. So think the same way when you go to something as big as that. Choose wisely. Find what fits for you. Find what's safe for you. But enjoy the time. And you're so right, Garrett. Find the smaller things because, gosh, they usually end up being the best. They usually do. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Garrett, if I can add on top of that, don't be afraid to ask questions. And I think a lot of people, when they walk by the vendors, they're like, I, I, you know, I don't want to talk about ask Mackenzie about her book, ask her about what's, you know, what the story is. She will talk your ear off. Every author wants you to get their book and they will go. Thanks. Chris. Thanks. 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 Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, She's been waiting nice, for an Tina. hour to uh, run that. <laughs> Bam! She gotcha. Well, we are, we are Got at the, Yeah, I just want to let you all know you were fantastic. We are at the uh, before we go moments. Uh, I'm just going to wrap this really up. Yes, please talk to the authors and make sure you talk. You know, they they will tell you about their books. They're not there. They're not. They're not stuck up. They want to, but you got to come to them. Talk to Nisha about her organization. Ask her what she does. It's going to be incredible the time that you spend about the uh, with people who are there for their organizations and what wonderful things they do for the community. Ask Jessica about her cosplay. If you're not familiar with it, all the cosplayers are out there to geek out. So if you're not familiar with an anime cosplay or if you're not familiar with what she's wearing, hi, just hey, Jessica, I just want to ask, who are you cosplaying? She'll tell you the novel, this book story, whether it be River Song, whether it be Jessica Jones with, with alcohol in her pants. It will be, they will be able to talk about That's it. That's not and going away. Will have an experience not more than soon. just standing in a line waiting for your favorite celebrity. Uh, yes, we are now at the... Uh, 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 the um, just before we go, does anybody have any final thoughts before we go? Anything about the topic? Anything you want to just let people know about? Just have fun. And have fun. Yes. Yes. Also remember that if you're going for celebrities, remember they are people too. So they're going to have days when they might not be in a good mood. Right. Don't hold it against them. Or if they're super tired because their plane took 20 hours to get there. And exactly. So they're... Oh, my God. You're so right on that one. And, and and don't expect, even though when you have get on Space Mountain, it's only two to three minute rides. <laughs> and that might be the length of time that you get with a celebrity. If you think you're going to be there for two hours telling them about their whole life story and telling them your whole life story, it's not going to happen because they're going to have a line that's a two hour wait to begin with. And it will probably be a two to three minute ride. It's not that they don't love you. It's not that they don't care. They come out to see you. It's because they got to get to everybody and they only have a certain amount of time to do it. Mm-hmm. So from all of us here at the Legend of the Traveling Tardis, I'm sure I speak for everybody. Please, when you go to convention, have fun, ask questions, enjoy everything, plan out yeah. your day, check out all the stuff. Because you will have an experience, not just you got on Space Mountain, but you got on the Hall of Presidents, you saw the Country Bear Jamboree, you went on Splash Mountain, you've done everything, and you will have a great, great time. And all these people are wonderful that they go to conventions, you should check them out over there. But as as far as conventions concerned, we are going to be going to, I think, Megacon, and I think we've already... Oh, yeah. Kind of declared Dragon Con, if I'm not mistaken, there, Garrett. Yep, we uh, we are planning uh, MegaCon. We are planning Dragon Con. We have a lot of smaller conventions in between, and uh, it's going to be a great season. 
Yeah, so keep an eye out on the Legend of the Traveling Tardis and the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour as well as all, both of our Facebooks and our Twitters. For more information about our conventions and upcoming appearances, check us out. Folks, thank you for joining us back in the Hooniverse, and always continue to listen and become part of the legend. <laughs>